Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mandala Stones by Board and Dice. It plays two to four players, it takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Mandala Stones, you're going to be doing one of two things on your turn. You'll be either gathering stones, or you'll be scoring the stacks of stones that you have gathered. Your objective, to score as many points as possible before the timer runs out, and the timer is going to run out based on when people start scoring stones and placing it on the Mandala board. You'll be gathering the different stacks and trying to align the exact same colors, while also gathering them based on their specific patterns represented on the board that's always random randomize every game. This is a pattern game, this is a puzzle game, and a strategy game, all bent around you trying to acquire as many points as possible by gathering the correct components at the right time, and not allowing your opponents to gather certain patterns when you're not able to either. Can you gather the most points and the best stones throughout the game? Find out in the game Mandala Stones, which I will show you down below right now. Welcome to the game Mandala Stones, currently set up for two players, but regardless of the number of players, the game will be set up the same. Uh, everybody is going to get their own player boards. There will be two main boards set out within reach of everyone, and you're going to set them up just like this. Go ahead and place the starting markers in the four different circular areas in these exact locations. Then give uh, the bag that has all of these in it, and if you haven't placed them, I'll place them on it and shake it up, and then draw four at a time and place them in each of these areas with the symbol below provided. They should all be filled up and that should take care of all of the stones. Then deal out two objective cards for each player. And at the end of the game, a player will be selecting one of these that they have to score points. They range from seven to about 10 points. And everybody's also going to get a player, or player um, reference card that they can use to understand how to pick and how to score. Everybody's also gonna get a player board. Uh, this board is also going to come with a little token, which will start on the space provided as well with the same symbol as where the mandala stones are going to be located. And then for each of the number of players, you're gonna have these plus 50 markers somewhere so that players can gather them when they get past the uh, 50 point marker. Uh, and in which case they're gonna get these, these bonus points basically and they'll start back over again. And that's all you need in order to set the game up. To begin the game, select a player to go first, and then they can choose one of two actions. And typically speaking, <laughs> always speaking, they're always going to start with the pick action. However, the other action is to score. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the pick action first. In order to pick stones up, you must select one of these four, uh, these four player markers here and place them on any of these circular spaces provided down below. So for instance, I could take this and place this here, I could place it here, or even all the way over here. The choice is up to me. Uh, when you place, your objective is to gather as many stones as possible. And of course, what type of colors and of course the type that represents the specific uh, player, or the icons here. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. I'll take this and I'm going to go ahead and place it. Mm, let's say I'll place it right here. Okay. When I place this here, I'm then going to collect stones and I can collect them in the order of my choosing going clockwise. So I'll start with one stone and then I'll go all the way around. There's two rules though to collecting. The first rule is you can never collect a stone if it is adjacent to another player marker. So I'm not going to be able to collect this stone here. The other rule is I cannot collect a stone if it does not match the same symbol as the piece that I, I moved. So for instance, this little piece here is kind of like a little snowflake, which means I won't be able to gather these circular type snowflake tokens here. Uh, meaning that I can't gather this one, this one, or this one. So the only one I actually will get to gather in this specific example is this piece here. And we'll say that this player was the one who did the first turn. Then, with the stone that I've gathered, I'll go ahead and place it down on any of the five areas on my board. And when I place it down, you will not be able to place more stones on that area until the board has been, that board area has been fully removed or cleared. I'll take this and I will place it right here. And then the next player is going to get a chance to go, taking the marker and then placing it down. This is a better example because I can choose any of these three and then I'll be able to collect them. These two do not match. However, these all do and nothing is adjacent to them. So if I choose to start with this one here and I go clockwise, I can take this one and place it here. Then I'm gonna have to go to this one next and then I'll place it here. Can't take this one, so I'll then take this one and place it up here. Now I have my stack. It's actually a rather good stack in comparison to this one here, I suppose. 
but the, how you score these guys matters as well. Now the next player is going to get a chance to go, and it'll go back and forth with the picking action. Let's talk about scoring, and in order to do that, I'm just kind of going to kind of fast forward into the game here a little bit to explain how scoring works, so you'll have an understanding. And uh, then after that, I'll explain the final aspect of the game. Now, of course, it, the board will look, I don't know, something uh, a little like this, I suppose. Uh, let's say it is now this player's turn and they wish to score. Now, how you score is pretty simple. You can do score option A, which is choose one uh, color that is located on your board. And you have to look at the tops here. I'm going to choose pink here. So I can only score these three. Now, I can score two or more. So I can just score these two stacks or I can score all three of these stacks. Generally speaking, you always want to score all of them unless you get a little more advanced into the game. Each of these spaces will give you points based on what they are asking you to do. If I score this stack here, that's going to give me one point for each of the different stack heights of all the stacks that I have. So I have a stack of one, I have a stack of two, and a stack of three. That will net me three points. And this will be moved off the board. This one here is going to score me four points because it is the bottom stone. And on the bottom here, it says four. If this was the second stone, I would score two. The, the third, it would score one. And the top, I would score one as well. So that will let me four more points. One, two, three, and four. And then this one over here is going to let me one point plus the different, num different colors available to me in this area here. I have pink and yellow, which means I'm going to get two points plus one, which is three points. One, two, and three, putting me at a total of ten. Then I'll take the pieces that I've taken off. And when you score, you score uh, the entire stack as it stands, or how, as it asks you to. You take off just the top piece, and then you're going to place it down on this board here, starting with the first space. And then that will end your scoring. If you ever get to a space like this, so for instance, if this one here was here, and I scored the extra, oh, I don't know what this one would be. It would be four more points, two, three, four. And I also scored this. I can I could place this here, and that would net me a bonus point. So there's one bonus. There's a double bonus, in which case I get one extra point for placing that there. Another way to score is pretty interesting, and I'll show you how it works over here. Now, typically, I could score these three blues here, or I can score a number of the top tiles off of my board. So if I didn't, let's say I didn't like uh, these ones here, I could take three of these, and I could just simply get one point for each of them. I could place them all down. That would score me three points, and then I get a plus two for taking those uh, three and placing them down. Uh, plus two. And that would be another way of scoring. It's usually good for when you want to take pieces off to try and regulate the colors associated with the top of the stones here. And that's pretty much how scoring and picking goes. You'll either choose to pick or you'll choose to score. Uh, eventually, you're going to run into the game end section. And how that works is in a two-player game, as these things start to, start getting filled up, uh, yeah, yeah, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it keeps going like this way. Eventually, you'll run into the little hands. For a two-player game, as soon as the stones hit here, everybody should have equal number of turns and the game will end. This is for three players, and this is for four players. If there are more stones that get added, just simply set them off to the side of the board. Then, when the game is finally over, you'll look at one of your objectives, you can choose one of them, and then you'll score that objective. Hopefully, you meet the requirements. This one says, if you end the game with no stones on your board, that's 10 bonus points. And this one over here is if you end the game with exactly one stone, that's eight. And there's a variety of different types of objectives in the game for scoring. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. And if there is a tie, the person who was first in play order is the person who wins the game. Pretty straightforward as far as it goes, mandala stones. So what do I think about this pattern strategy style puzzle game? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the quality of components. And everything in here is exceptionally high quality, except for I guess the player boards are a little thinner comparatively to the main two boards of the game, which would have been nice to see them thicker, but it's not really a huge issue for me. All of the stones, however, are nice, thick, beautiful plastic. Uh, the different character markers that you'll be using throughout the game are thick wood with beautiful indentations of the different types of patterns. Easy to recognize, easy to place. The game is very easy to set up, very easy to take apart, and it's a quick play for as much strategy as provided in the game. Now, the game is going to play relatively the same every single time you play, with a unique board setup and state every single time you jump in, so no two games are ever alike, but every game is going to be similar in how you're going to choose to play it and maybe what your strategies are. Strategies can vary depending on whether you want to gather more of the same type of colors, uh, maybe a certain type of number in each stack, or if you want to go for some type of very 
variation. You're also going to be getting these unique objective cards throughout the game here. These guys will score you anywhere up to from 7 to 10 points, uh, depending on which ones you want to use. And of course, you'll have the option throughout the entire game to deduce which one is best for you in order to gain points, which will definitely change your last one or even two turns in the game. It plays two, three, and four players, and the game feels very, very similar with all the different player types. So thusly, the game won't be changing much regardless of the number of players you're playing with, other than, of course, uh, the the variety of stones left over as the game continues. With a larger player game, it'll limit the amount of stones that are going to be available for the taking, especially with having to gather four stones at a time, which is, of course, one of the main objectives in the game that you'll be attempting to visualize and then conceptually gain, placing them onto your board. Each of the different spaces on your board will allow you to score a different type or style of points, and of course, if you can score all of them, that's probably the best, but how you choose to score them is important as well. Some of them require you to score higher points by looking at the bottom of the board, while others are going to have you scoring higher points by looking at the top of the board stack, uh, based on the variation of the different stacks and, of course, the number of colors. And, of course, your points are also going to be listed on your board as well, making it very easy to track. And if you do get over the coveted 50 points, there's a little marker here so you can go ahead and restart and continue playing with that extra 50 points. Very likely, you probably won't hit over maybe 75 points in this game, but I guess it's possible. Uh, this game was a joy to play. If you like puzzle games, if you like pattern recognition games, and you like high quality components that are easy to set up, easy to tear down, this is what I would definitely suggest getting. This is a game that my wife is definitely going to want me to keep because she really enjoys puzzle games, and this is probably going to be in one of her tops, I would imagine, based on the variety and style of the puzzle game that it is. Uh, there's choices, but it's not too overwhelming. It's not too complex, but the amount of strategy is high in the game as well. You're not going to be spending a whole bunch of time on your turn. Realistically, there's a couple good moves. You can select the best one for yourself, and that's the one you're going to take, and where you place it matters as well. Turns go quick, and so games will move quick as well. Scoring also indicates bonus points, and gathering when you're going to score. Uh, utilizing this board here is important, because you can get one and two bonus points, and if you're really, really lucky, you can gather three bonus points uh, by placing down markers, or even four, one, two, three, and four, if you're uh, exceptionally good at scoring. So not only do you have to determine is it worth scoring earlier for less points on your board, but mo more bonus points, probably, or do you want to save up for the coveted largest amount of points you can can, can place? Uh, do you even want to fill your board up? Or do you want to just score the tops of all of the pieces off of your board? Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff is really, really cool, nice, nice additive to the game. Uh, I personally am not a huge fan of puzzle games. I don't directly dislike them, and I, after playing Moonshot with Callie, I've gotten more into them and more into them, um, but as far as puzzle games go, this is one I feel com competent at, which makes me even more interested in playing it. I don't feel like I don't understand what's going on or how to play the game. It's relatively straightforward with the strategy involved, making it enough to where I lose against Callie, but I don't lose overly too much. So all the scoring is relatively close in this game, making it very fun and competitive for everybody. Beautiful coloration, high quality products, high quality visualization, easy to understand, easy to put up, easy to place down. Um, negatives to this game, well, it is puzzle, which means there's going to be competition in it. Uh, there, it's not a huge thinker. It is a thinker, but it's not a huge thinker. It's not extremely overly complex. It's quick. So it's going to play in 30 minutes. Maybe you're going to want to play again or something else. I don't know if this is... An, this is kind of like midway. Not necessarily a filler, but not necessarily something that's going to engage for an entire evening. Um, and of course, it's... It has that sameness to it. Like when after you've played the first couple games, I think I've played it like four or five times now. Uh, each game, I have my specific strategy that I like to use. There are multiple ones, but I've kind of stuck into this specific one. And this game does ask you to gather certain points, uh, utilizing the boards in very specific ways, and uh, you're going to profit off of that. And then it just comes down to when you want to score and how well you did by placing down those pieces. Um, overall, though, an excellent game. Not something I would consider to be a lot of negatives towards. Boards. Really, this is just going to not attract people who don't like puzzle games, but otherwise, if you're somebody who does like those style games and wants something colorful and high quality, then this is definitely one I would suggest you take a look at. Mandala Stones, excellent game by Board and Dice, our seal of puzzle approval. Yes, it's it, it, it gets it, even though a puzzle game, just because everybody's really enjoyed the game as we've played it.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mandala Stones by Board and Dice. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. Also go ahead and like, comment, and share this video if you're interested in sharing the different types of games that we've been producing out here, or, or reviewing out here, I should say, as well as, of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more of our videos. We produce content almost daily, other than Wednesdays where we do our live streams, and then um, sometimes it's not Saturday and Sunday. That's usually when we take a break and I have to do other things. For instance, Moonshell Mermaid Game. We are producing a game, Unfiltered Games is. Uh, we have my wife's game. It's also a puzzle style game. And if you like puzzle games and you want something with vibrant, beautiful mermaids, that's one to take a look at. Thank you, Patreon, so much for producing. Um, you, uh, one dollar we do every month. It definitely, definitely helps us out here uh, to give away and ship out games for you guys. It's going to be helping us with our new studio and our new location. We're setting up a new set in the next couple of weeks here so when I do some pre-recorded videos and I'm not on the streams you'll know why I'm trying to make it uh I'm, I'm all we're, we're, we're moving up and because of that I'm going to be having some higher quality production stuff which I'm very excited for uh, that's pretty much all I got for you uh, make sure you join the live streams every Wednesday 6 30 p.m pst thank you guys so much for watching and as always I look forward to gathering stones with you next time